Okay, we are back from our lockdown. All that good stuff there. Um, you know, and my wife and I, we had discussed yesterday about the uh, how over time the types of drills that we do in class has changed. She's, a, she's just a little bit older than me and she, she remembers those Cold War drills that you sometimes would do in class. I don't quite remember it, but it's possible you got that. But and then this type of drills, these, you know, ever since uh, there were there were some uh, school shootings before Columbine, but after Columbine, it seemed like the numbers increased. And so these types of drills are now part of our our our, our routine. So there we go. All right. So with today, um, when you walked in, you, you might have saw that you had something on your desk, and that's just your lunch pin uh, code. And not that you use uh, your lunch pin code, but some might do that. And it seemed like a significant amount of people forgot uh, their code and where to find their code. And so they just printed out every one. So um, if you don't need it, be sure, you know, you just throw it away uh, or just uh, keep it for uh, uh, your, your high school scrapbook of all the things that you've done in high school, throw it in your yearbook, whatever it is. Okay. So we have that. Uh, just at, before we, were, we, we got into that drill, I was talking about this Friday opened up. Uh, uh, there'll be an assessment that will open up on Mao. It's just like uh, previous ones we had dealing with uh, Hitler and Stalin and with cause and effects, 20th century wars, that type of short answer. So be sure you take a look at that, do some prepping, maybe work with some individuals in that prep process. Opens up Friday, closes Sunday at 11.59. So you want to take care of that. That'll be one of our summative uh, for the trimester. We'll, we'll have several of them. This will be the first. Okay, any quick questions on that? All right, um, our focus today is to dig in and analyze uh, various aspects of Mao's uh, China and look at how he is reshaping society. And we're gonna do that through a sources activity. So let's go to Schoology and um, open that up, please. All right. Okay, and it'll look something like this. So I had opened this up earlier today. And we're gonna do uh, a little bit of it together um, as a class and I'll, then I'll give some time to work on those sources we don't, uh, but we will come together again and and uh, uh, what, um, what you had been working on. So when you leave class today, you should have an almost completed sources activity. So just finalizing maybe just a little bit on that last, that last question. All right, and so what I'll do is I'll call up my document so I can type on it and so we can, those at home and those that are here can reference it as well and always go back and look at uh, the recording if you need to to see it. So like again, when we do sources activity, we are focusing on a specific source and that um, with that, uh, we wanna make sure that we use that source to help address the question. This again was a paper one uh, skill and one that we can always uh, continue to use, uh, what, even if we're not taking an IB stuff like that. And so uh, we have here about five documents or five sources. That first source is, is going to be about, um, when we look at it, uh, changes in marriage laws. So again, remember when we go through um, first thing we, we tend to do is want to go and take a kind of look at what the sources are. So we, when we go back, we, it can help give us some context. The second source is a poem. And uh, to help get us an understanding of what this source is going to be about, uh, we look at this little nugget here of information. That was a poem that was written by Peng. And Peng was a, a, a pretty prominent military leader. And... What we see here is um, he's going to criticize. He's going to criticize economic policy. So this poem uh, is going to be uh, about great. 
All right, make sure I spell things correctly here. All right, so this one's about the Great Leap for, it's probably more uh, Great Leap for criticism. All right, then this, these here, we got some charts and all that stuff um, gra uh, that is going to have a bunch of data in it. And so here, first five-year plan. So this isn't, this isn't the Great Leap Forward program. That's going to occur after 1957. So here we have um, first look at statistics related to uh, economic policies. And same thing down here, it's just more statistics. The thing though is when we look at statistics coming out of China and even out of the old Soviet Union or any Eastern Bloc country, um, we always got to preface it by knowing that the numbers may not be accurate government because some of it can be based on government data. Not that it's not a real big shock. Sometimes governments uh, might massage numbers. And it doesn't necessarily have to always be a uh, communist country to massage numbers. Here, these next two uh, sources, are there are also statistics, but these statistics um, related to the Great Leap Forward program. I'm just going to call it the GLP or GLF, Great Leap Forward. And same here, some more uh, statistics. Great leap forward. And then this last one here, it's an interview um, and it's comes out and the it's about the cultural revolution. So that yeah, this source is about um, focuses on the cultural revolution. So in many ways, what we're looking at here is um, economic policies and some social policies. Uh, when we look at all these. And this one, we're looking at an OPVL on that one. We'll do that together as a class. All right, so we got a general idea um, of what these sources are about. And our overall objective here, like anything, is we want to see what impact did Mao's policies have on the lives of the Chinese people. All right, and so by doing that, we're looking at the social and the economic policy. So we should get a sense of that. All right, so if we look at this first source and let's do this source together here and i'll say we'll do we'll do three of the sources together that's why i i made the claim earlier that it's very possible that you walk out of here and this thing is done uh, looking at this first source all right well you're at home or here um you know the the slogan reads because i don't know if many of us in here are fluent in chinese anyone here fluent in chinese Anyone interested in becoming fluent in Chinese? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, um, those who might eventually work for what we'll call uh, multinational corporations, you might find a stay in China. And so um, having some understanding of the language might, might work. Um, I know many of my uh, college uh, buddies who did go on to work for multinational corporations. Uh, knowing a second language was very, very helpful when they were uh, stationed overseas for their, their companies and such. And if they, if they want to move up that corporate ladder and, and chase that money and all that stuff that goes with it, they need to know a second language and all that. So I could probably, I could probably, uh, find my way around uh, Germany. I, I do have a decent understanding of the German language. 
And then the only reason that was the case is if I want to understand what was happening at uh, the Hyder de Florin family reunions, um, many of them could speak pretty fluent German. It's like, at least I want to know what my, my grandparents and, and great uncles and aunts were saying. All, that. all right, digress. So here we go. The slogan says freedom of marriage, happiness, good luck. Um, and we look at that image. What, what's happening in this image? Does it look like what kind of actions going on? What do you got? Okay, he's in front of her. So we're looking at positioning. It, it, it gives the appearance that he's in front. All right, go ahead. They look happy. They look happy. Why suppose might they look at or, or Smurf? What were you gonna say? Well, I think I think those might be chrysanthemums, um, but someone in, in here might be a little bit better with flowers and and, and, and such like that. But uh, and, and it, you're right, there is it is on their heart, so there is some significance with that. What do you got, us? Uh, what kind of license? Lawyer's license, all right. Looks like they just got married. All right. So one thing, one thing, if you if you remember from doing your graphic organizer and, and with that change for women and in China, uh, in the People's Republic of China, um, what happened to marriages? Okay, so this one here we can look at um, the source. The source does, you know, so if we look at, here are some things that we could write down, you know, like source A uh, indicates marriage is happy because it was mutual. They both wanted to get married. It wasn't arranged. They both wanted to get married. All right. Um, and I started speaking. All right. And the question is, you know, what is the message of source say in regards to gender equality? How can we take this? What, what could be another statement we could make? So sometimes in, in propaganda posters and images, we do have to make some inferences and we do have to bring some outside information in. How could this reflect equality? She kind of had the same, not the same, but more equal status to the man. Okay. She could own property, she could divorce if she wanted to. Okay, so uh, the source also uh, indicates that um, the marriage brings um, equal status, and you can go, i.e., property divorce. Which is a bit, which is a big thing, um, and what they found in the People's Republic of China was a spike in the divorce rate. Many of these arranged marriages ended, uh, and that primarily, if we want to look at a region in China, where do you think that occurred more than others? Beijing. Beijing so a bigger city, like Beijing. Um, so that 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 seems to occur more out uh, more in the urban areas, in the rural areas. These changes are going to be a little bit slower. So this is something that Mao and, and the People's Republic of China are going to fight when they're trying to transform society is really take on that tradition. And so in the Cultural Revolution, old traditions, they're, they're really trying to stamp that thing out. All right. So look at poems. All right. So here you go. Get your get your get your little 
um, skills going here. All right. So we have a poem, and it's written by Peng. And he was, like I said, a, a highly decorated military commander under Mao. All right. and, this, and this poem comes out 1958. And to put that in a historical context, this is around the time of the Great Leap Forward, as well as the Hundred Flowers Campaign. And the Hundred Flowers Campaign was allowed people to criticize the government. Problem was Mao, one could say Mao's feelings got a little hurt because um, there's a lot of criticism. And it's like, whoa, those, those suggestion boxes were getting full. And maybe we got to stop criticizing. But he, it, his way to criticize was through a poem. So we got to figure out what's the mess here. Millet is scattered all over the ground. Leaves of the sweet potatoes are withered. The young and the strong have gone to smelt iron. To harvest grain, there are children and old women. How shall we get through next year? I shall agitate and speak out on behalf of the people. Right? Um, and so here, here you have a guy who has been there from the beginning with Mao, even referencing in that little blurb there uh, uh, that he was on the long march. All right. So many men would say people like that are usually untouchable. But he does get purged uh, as a result of the Hundred Flowers campaign. And you do see posthumously rehabilitated in December of 1978. You know, Deng Xiaoping is going to have something to do with that. And that's important as well because that's restoring family name and family honor and all that stuff that goes with that. So if we look at this message, what's Peng getting at in this message? Okay, so uh, the source, or we me just say according to source B, uh, the crops suffered because people were working on um, smelting iron. Smelting iron, that brings me a flashback to my industrial tech days as well. Ninth grade, we we had a metal shop, and one of the things that we could do was um, make casts and pour, pour metal in it. All I can think is while we were in ninth grade, we were pouring hot metal. Don't do that anymore. Be some liability issues. But So that, that is one thing that's brought up. What else? What else can we say about this? Go ahead. It seems that this person has both the belief that he's the speaker body saying that. Okay, because and, and and to do that, he thinks he can criticize, openly criticize, right? So uh, the source uh, indicates. Perhaps change can occur as a result of criticism. And it is of the great leap forward program. I mean, he's right. Great leap forward program is going to end. Uh, it does end. It, and there's a whole reshifting that's going on. All right, so realistically, when we do these sources, we always try to find at least two statements. So we got two statements. Anyone else want to throw another one in there, just in case? Go ahead, Smurf. Um, I think he goes through all the way. He has this position. He's doing this. 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 He's
it's not like a, a choice that he has, even though he knows it's wrong, he thinks he feels it's right. Good point. No, that, that is a good point. And I think because of his position and how close he is to Mao, he feels he could do this. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, what else? Um, according to source B, one of my common features is the fact that Mao is concerned about how people provide his hands to him. Yeah. And that's another really good point, that, that uh, second to last line there. You know, how shall we get through next year? That's a concern. And that's why he's criticizing is, okay, how we're going to get through next year. Um, from the video clip a few days ago, we knew that uh, they took uh, more of the uh, food stuff and sent it to the city. And the people out in the country are concerned how they're going to survive. So, yes, um, good, good points. So, again, you know, so again, you know the, the source indicates perhaps change can occur as a result of criticism of the Great Leap Forward. That could be because of his position. Uh, there is a concern about um, uh, next year in regards to food. I mean, and we know, we know that um, famine uh, is 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 a big issue, and it, it is an issue of of, of security in many ways. You know, we talk about food security. Here we go, we got, we got an example. All right, um, in a moment, I'll cut you loose on those statistics, but looking at uh, origin, purpose, value, and limits, let's just take this one on. All right, let's just grab a hold of this one. This one's about the cultural revolution, and it really isn't that big. It's not that big of a source here. It's an excerpt from a tape interviewed with Cho, um, broadcast in, uh, in a BBC radio program, The Cultural Revolution, July 1998, all right, 1998. So we're looking at well over 30 years through The Cultural Revolution. So uh, maybe if they feel it's okay now to, to speak out, maybe. So when you look at doing an OPVL, uh, we, we first want to figure out the origin purpose and the content. That is going to help us figure out the value and the limit. And when we do a value, we can quickly do a limit on that value. And then this, you know, same thing, and we'll be able to get the stuff taken care of. All right. So anyone in here want to feel like they want to read? Just read that little excerpt. Go ahead. No music sounded anymore. The silver was silent. Everybody was just learning and doing self-criticism or accepting criticism from the students. Every morning at the time of the office, I would sit there and read books and write papers. I had to analyze the mistakes in my work. My teaching or performing would be performed a lot of classical or Chinese or traditional music. We thought that we popularized the bad thing of the young generation. All right. So there we go. If we, if we want, if we, uh, if we can summarize a little bit here. Um, what what what's it saying? What's happening to to the music in China? Faded. It's fading. It's faded. It's faded. What what do they need to um, be focusing on? Self criticism. They got to do some self criticism. Like anything, you know. If I was a teacher back then, every day I'd have to self criticize. You know what I'm doing, um, and they're self criticizing because. They, they're accused of teaching the traditions, the classics, all right? So if we look at the origin, what's the origin of this source? Where's it coming from? Okay. Um, this is an interview. I try to do a little research on this this individual and he, whether or not he was a big name uh, person, just someone who was willing to speak speak up about the Cultural Revolution thirty years afterwards. All right, this is an interview with um, that um, was nineteen ninety eight with the BBC. 
And the BBC, what kind of what kind of company is the BBC? Okay, and and it's a Western government. All right, so it is, and that's important to know. And the BBC seems to uh, lend itself a lot to understand uh, getting information out about about China, uh, mainly because of history as well. What's the purpose? Why is, why is he having this interview, or, or what, why is this interview going down? What do you got? Can you say that one more time? Okay, to give information about the life in China, specifically about self-criticism. Okay. Uh, self-criticism. And probably more specifically, you know, how it impacted music um, during to be speak about. And then when we talk about the content, content is we look at, um, so that interview, what can we say about this interview when, when, when um, you know, if we listened to it and heard it, uh, what can we say about the content that this person is speaking about? I guess my question to you is, do you get, do you get an idea of how life was impacted? And how do we, how do we get this idea that life was impacted? So we, we do. All right. So the content. So uh, we get a sense because of the specifics. Uh, daily activities. You know, every day I got to self criticize at a certain time, those types of things. Uh, music, you know, we're specific about the music. All right. So then if we look value, you know, what kind of, what kind of value can we get a sense here, either on the origin, the purpose and the content? What do you got? Okay, so the value of the origin uh, is that um, this individual is a music uh, teacher and directly impacted. How can that be a limit? So it, 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 by saying he has a bias and it's taken away, does it seem like uh, he's willing to speak out because he might have a, like a motive of some sort? Okay. All right. So limit is uh, the limit.
All right. So then let's talk about another value here. How about another value? What, this, what can we say about the value of the content? So here we're looking at, when we look at the content, we're looking at what the person was saying. What the person was saying. Again, is, is this per person speaking in general terms? Is is he speaking in general terms? Like, you know, oh, I really bad time, you know, I'm so brutal. Um, and some, you know, that, you know, it was, a, it was a really fun time. It was glorious time. It was beautiful. Um, those are general terms. But here, does it look like he is giving some specific details? Again? Yeah. Yeah. So we look at the value of the content is um, – That, again, it may sound like we're repeating ourselves, and we are, uh, that value of the content is that it um, gives specific information on what people needed to do. Um, Again, we can go, i.e., self-criticism. But what can be a limit of that, limit of the content? Maybe that will be one-sided. Well, it is one-sided, so... Uh, so again, when we look at the content here, is he, he he's purposely picking certain content to speak about. So when we look at uh, the content, the limit of the content is that it may not give the complete picture. Limit of the content is that information uh, perhaps is left out. We don't know if. Um, how this played out. Just in that little excerpt, we don't know how this played out. So the limit of the content is that the information perhaps, uh, that, that some information because a certain perspective is being uh, projected. So there we go. All right. So now what you have here is uh, questions three, four, and and five, or excuse me, six. What I want you to do here is uh, in the next fifteen, say, uh, fifteen minutes, um, slug away at questions three and four, and we'll come back in fifteen minutes to see what we have. Um, feel free to work with a, an elbow partner near you uh, um, or someone in front behind you, um, and then we'll come back. So those at home, let's stay on, and we'll come back, and we're going to talk about questions three and four and their statistics. All right, and again, when we look at statistics, um, in the questions are looking for where it looks like the first five-year plan was successful. So you want to look at statistics that show success. And then the, the next question is looking at where the Great Leap Forward was a disaster. So find some statistics that show that. The easiest way to do that is change over time. Change over time. Look where the chart begins. Look where the chart ends. And that can help you. All right. So let's, let's take 15 minutes to do that.
It will come together in less than five.
All right, let's bring it together here. All right. So here's where we can either speak in some general terms as well as some specificality is looking at that first um, question here uh, that, we're, that you had to do on your own or with a historical buddy. Uh, how would you use source C and D to support an argument that the first five-year plan was a success for for China? All right, and so there there. So could you say, based on these two sources, first five-year plans were successful? Okay, so both sources indicate the first five-year plans plan was a success. All right. So what do the numbers indicate? Okay, um, and you can find that in both sources, or that okay. So, so you're going to say source C. Correct. Good thoughts there. Source C shows um, that industrial production increased. All right. All right. So that is what you said, Drew. Okay. All right. Anyone want to add anything else to it? We got Carson. Um, it says uh, source D shows an increase in per capita production in Shanghai compared to like 1930. There's actually only five categories as a percentage. Um, I think some can be increased. One of those being alcohol production, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> so uh, it shows that more things are being bought and participation in the economy. All right, so then what can we say about the standard of living in China? Okay, yes, the sources indicate. All right, this is where we put hashtag winning. You know, he, he's winning, it seems like. All right. But now let's take a look at um, the next one. What do the sources indicate? They indicate that it was a disaster. How big of a disaster was it? Hey, it's huge. All right. But let, let's talk about specificalities. Go ahead. So we think you, know, you look at when these whole declined. Um, Steel declined, cement declined, uh, animals, all that stuff, all those numbers declined. Why? I mean, for, for so, uh, so, when we look at source E, source E primarily, except at the bottom down here, talks about industrial output. Most of it is about agriculture here. Source E indicates a decline in agriculture. Why? Okay. Because of neglect. Because most, most people on the communes were expected to do what? Make steel do all that stuff. And so agriculture, it's going to decline. And, it, and let me tell you, if crops decline, 
that's going to indicate livestock most likely is going to decline as well because some of the crops actually might be used as feed. All right, that, that's going down as well. Okay. Um, and so then we look at uh, source F. Uh, in um, an industrial output, and why would that be the case? Yeah, because because um, well, per, uh, perhaps the quality you know the the, the quality was hurt. Because of the back, you know, what they sometimes call it the backyard furnaces um, or um, lacked uh, production. All of this, you know, in some ways indicates that it definitely was 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 a failure. So when you look at the industrial output. Uh, just e even mentioned in source uh, E, it went from, in terms of billions dollars, or I mean, if we look at in, in their money, um, went from 121 to 94. That's that's a huge that's a huge loss, and that's money that could, could have been used for other purposes, you know, to to help um, offset. All right, so. I apologize because of the, the lockdown, we weren't able to, to take hold of this one here. So we want to, we'll start tomorrow off by looking at, well, I want you to to go home and complete the last part of it and we'll, we'll discuss it. But we can say that uh, Mao's policies, you know, if we did make a claim right away, um, you know, Mao's policies, uh, were far reaching. His policies were um, controlling. Impacted daily lives. So now I would go in and I would explain that. Yes. It should already be there. Okay. Should already be there. All right. Let's double check. I think it is. Yep, it's right there. Okay. All right. So um, that is at home. Thanks for hanging on. We've got a couple minutes here. You can exit. Um, those here, thanks for your patience. Um, just get yourself ready for the next hour. <laughs>